what song that is? That's called Wonderful Is Your Name. Let's swing. Let's swing it. <laughs> That's just so wrong. That's just so wrong. Oh, <laughs> Pick it up. Oh. Good morning, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. What a mighty God we serve. Are you glad to be alive this morning? I certainly am and I'm grateful to God for the opportunity uh, to be with you and to share uh, in this time of prayer and devotion. This morning, I want to ask as you've entered into uh, the virtual prayer chamber uh, that you would like this broadcast and that you would share this broadcast uh, with your networks so that we can reach as many people as we can with the word of God and with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're grateful for all of you who are already in the room and we are thankful to God yet again for God's keeping power that God has allowed us to come together yet one more time. And so we are excited to be here in the land of the living this morning. I pray that you are doing well. And this morning, as we gather, I am liking, sharing, and tagging this morning. I do believe uh, that there is uh, a word from the Lord. I believe that the Lord has invited us yet again to the altar uh, for us to talk to him and uh, for him to talk to us. Uh, so come on in this morning. It's good to see each and every one of you in the, the sanctuary. It's good, good, good to see you. Good to see you. I see my daughter in ministry, uh, uh, Elder Anita Lee, son in ministry, uh, Minister Johnny Felton this morning, Deacon Shropshire, Terry Harris, good morning. 
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Jeanette Scott, Lisa Thompson, Minister Tangela. Barbara Williams, good morning, Minister Barbara. It's good to see you. Uh, Cindy Wilson, blessings to you this morning. Felicia Nelson, blessings, blessings. Beautiful, great morning to each and every one of you. Come on, let's get the word out. Let's share, let's like this morning. I uh, do believe the Lord has something for us uh, in his word. It's good to see each and every one of you. I'm um, certainly grateful, as the saints say nowadays, uh, to be seen and not viewed is a blessing. All right, come on in this morning. Come on in, people of God. It's good to see you. Uh, we thank the Lord uh, for life, health, and strength. I'm grateful uh, for a little bit of allergy relief. Uh, it's interesting, as much as I don't really care for uh, the concrete jungle of the inner city, I get back here and my allergies are better because the stuff that was in bloom in Atlanta is not yet in bloom here. And so I'm uh, feeling a little better there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning uh, to everyone that is coming in. I pray that you are well. I'm looking forward to us in TDCC. Uh, looking forward to us sharing together for our anniversary, the third weekend of April. Uh, we're going to be in the Daytona Beach area. You're getting to see um, advertisement about that shortly. Uh, but we are grateful to God that we are going to uh, be coming together to celebrate what the Lord has done in our community over the last three years. Good morning, Wanda Pool. Blessings. Good to see you. Tiffany Weaver. Yes, yes, yes. It's good to see you. I remember Brother Lloyd Buchanan. Yes. Uh, Donna Edwards, good to see you this morning. Blessings. Come on in, y'all. Come on in. Come on in, people of God. It's good to see everyone. Um, yes, and we're in prayer. Uh, for those who are in the Baltimore area uh, that are affected by the collapse of the Key Bridge. Thankfully, um, I have not yet checked on my mother and stepfather, but I'm believing that God, uh, of course, they ain't got no business out that time of night. No way. Y'all tell them I said it. <laughs> uh, but we are praying that that was just absolutely awful. And uh, the collapse of the bridge, there are several uh, vehicles that did uh, wind up submerged in the water. Good morning, Bernadette. Good morning. Blessings. Blessings to you, Attorney Joan Anthony. Blessings to you. Blessings, blessings, but we're in prayer. Good morning, Kim Brown Crawford. Good to see you. Uh, we're in prayer for so many that so many people have had death in their family. Uh, we're praying yet and still for Sister Deborah Frazier, the passing of her father. Uh, Sister Kimberly Crawford has had two deaths recently in her family. And so we're praying for all of you uh, who are dealing with death in your family. Um, pray that God would strengthen your hearts in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I, I want us this morning to consider... Uh, in the gospel according to Matthew. Uh, Matthew, Matthew's gospel. I want us to look at verses 12 and 13. Verses 12 and 13. Good morning to all. Verses 12 and 13 of Matthew's gospel. Good to see so many of you in this morning. Good morning to my first cousin, Star. Matthew 21, verses 12 and 13. If I were uh, to, to place a tag or a title on this uh, teaching opportunity, it would be keep the main thing, the main thing. Keeping the main thing, the main thing. We're praying for Deanna Leggett and the loss of her mother as well, yes. Um, Matthew 21, 12 and 13, listen to what the text reads. It says, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out all of the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of the money changers 
in the chairs of those selling doves. And he said to them, the scriptures declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. He said, my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into um, a den of thieves. We're talking about keeping the main thing, the main thing. This is, of course, a part of the Holy Week narrative that after the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, he comes and people spread out their palm branches before him as they cried out, Hosanna uh, in the highest to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He then uh, continues his journey into Jerusalem uh, during this Passover season. And as he enters into the temple, he notices that there are people that are buying and selling animals for sacrifice. Um, they're buying and selling animals uh, for the purpose of offering them in the worship context. He knows he notices that there are people there exchanging money and selling doves. Um, and I want us to be very clear. Um, you know, when I was raised in uh, one of one of my home churches back in Baltimore, New Friendship. A Baptist church, this scripture was often used uh, to prohibit uh, people from selling items in the sanctuary. So you could sell items in the church, but you could not sell items in the sanctuary. Uh, they wouldn't let you sell nothing once you enter those doors because they were saying this, uh, this, is, this is holy ground. You're not supposed to sell anything in the church. Uh, but I need us to make sure that contextually and culturally that we understand that the temple at Jerusalem, uh, that, that the entrance into the gates of the temple in Jerusalem, it was it's a it's a, a it's an open square, common place of gathering. So there are people everywhere selling all manners of things at the temple of Jerusalem. I've been there in the Holy Land. There are people there who are, you know, selling food. There are people there who are selling clothing items. You know, it's it's almost as going to um, an open square type of market event. So uh, I do not believe in accordance with this text that Jesus uh, was sending a message about selling and buying. Uh, but as we look at the text this morning, I believe that uh, the biggest lesson that Jesus is teaching here as he moves toward Calvary is an understanding of the true purpose of the place of gathering. The true purpose of the temple is not to take care of any carnal uh, exploit, uh, any uh, particular um, item of concern for us in our humanity, but the place of the temple is to be the house and the place of prayer. Not even the house of preaching or the place of preaching or the place of music, but it's to be the place of prayer. And in this text, he corrects a consciousness. He's saying, you all are disconnected from the real purpose of coming to the temple. You all are disconnected from the real purpose of coming into corporate gathering. You all are coming to offer uh, lambs and such for sacrifice, which is great, and to buy your doves for sacrifice, which is great. But don't ever forget that in the midst of your tradition and your ritualistic activity, that I, as the new way, as the more excellent way, am not seeking to deepen your connection with the traditions of what was, but I'm trying to make sure I deepen your relationship with the God of your salvation. He says, you've turned my temple into everything else except what I intended it to be. You turned it into a, po a political pulpit. You, you turned it in, into a place uh, where you come and shop and dance and enjoy music. You turned it into a place uh, where you engage in community dialogue and all of those things are great. He says, but listen, the purpose of the temple gathering is to come together in prayer to make a connection with the Most High God. And so he goes in and he clears it out. 
I'm sure nobody expected him uh, to engage in that type of behavior. They were probably looking at him like, what is wrong? He makes a public point. Don't get so caught up in the religious routine that you forsake or miss your opportunity to truly engage in the deeper work, in the deeper things of God. He says, you have turned my temple into a den of thieves. In other words, you're gathering here as robbers. He says, you're, 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 th this, is a, this is a gathering of criminals because you all are doing everything else except what I've truly called saints and people who are soon to be redeemed in this case in the text, but people in our dispensation who have been redeemed have been called to do. Said so this is a house of prayer. Purpose of the temple is to gather and pray. So he enters the temple and he drives out all of the people who are causing distraction. He drives out the people who are not connected to the reality of the temple. Because you must remember, this is Holy Week. In a few days, his body is going to become uh, the sacrifice. His blood is going to become uh, the, 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 the atoning liquid uh, for our sins. He is going to give himself up uh, for us uh, in just a few days uh, from this moment in the text so that, here it is, so that we would understand that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And the rebuke of the people in the physical temple is the same rebuke, I believe, that the Lord would offer today for those of us who house the Spirit of God and who are the walking testimonies and temples of God in the earth, doing everything and anything we can, except making that valid, valuable, and victorious connection with God in prayer. Says, don't, don't forget that one of our greatest works in this world, one of our greatest opportunities, one of our greatest privileges, what one of our greatest responsibilities is the opportunity, the privilege, the responsibility, and the work of prayer. We are encouraged, brothers and sisters, to pray without ceasing. We are encouraged that the effectual and fervent prayer of those who are righteous avail much. We have been encouraged in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 to humble ourselves and pray and to seek God's face and to turn from our wicked ways. We are encouraged in the biblical text that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. This temple ought to be a praying temple. I don't have no help out here in, in, in the virtual prayer chamber this morning. When's the last time you just took some time with the Lord and just prayed? spent time with him, turned it over to him, what, whatever it is. And, 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 even, and, and, and even understanding that the purpose and the work, the accountability and the opportunity of prayer is not for us to get something from God, but it's so that we can have an open communication and dialogue with God and hear what God has to say to us. Oh, come on, beloved. What a privilege it is, the hymn writer says, to carry everything to God in prayer. What peace we often forfeit. I wish I had help here in the virtual sanctuary this morning. What needless pains we bear because we don't carry ourselves everything to God in prayer. One of the most important uh, moments in the disciples' walk with Jesus is when Jesus taught his disciples to pray. So let me tell you what to do in this temple. He said, uh, and when you pray, this is how you ought to pray. You ought to adore God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, holy, sanctified be your name. He said, you, you, you ought to adore him 
render him reverence. He's that God, I want your kingdom to come and your will to be done in earth as it is in heaven. He says, adore him, place your concerns before him, confess your sins, offer him thanksgiving. It's the ACTS model, A-C-T-S, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Confess your sins, acknowledging who we are not in the face of who God is. Thanksgiving, offering God the praise for what God has already done, and supplication. Don't forget that our temples ought to be temples of prayer and intercession, not just for ourselves, but for our world, for those surrounding us, for those who are connected to us, and even for those that we may not know. We have been called in our temples to pray. Oh, yes. And, and I, I wish at times I would engage this priority uh, with more frequency because the more you pray, the more you'll want to pray. Yeah, he, he, he drives out in this text in Matthew 21. He drives out the money changers. He drives out the people in the temple who were doing their regular thing because they were not connected to the main thing. He says, my house will be called the house of prayer. If you go to a church that ain't a praying church, no, and I'm not talking about a strong prayer ministry. You know, we turn everything into ministries and teams nowadays. And I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm all for that. You know, I pastored at one point and we had a very strong intercessory prayer team, but I was intentional about making sure the entire church was called to prayer. Hmm? We're to be praying people. Our churches ought to be praying churches. That's the main thing. The main thing is not how much money we can raise in the offering. The main thing is not how well our pastor preaches or our choir sing. The main thing is not even how well we serve the community. But the main thing is, are we praying? Hallelujah. Are we a praying church? On his way to Calvary, he corrects the consciousness of those who are going in and out of the temple, those who have come in for the Passover celebration from miles away, and they've taken this pilgrimage, many of them on foot, just to get to Jerusalem so that they could come in and buy their sacrifice so that they could offer it as worship. He said, no, let me tell you, let me show you what we're supposed to be doing. He said, what we're supposed to be doing is praying. So Father, forgive us for not making prayer our first priority. For, for, forgive us, even in moments like these, where our minds oftentimes go to, oh, here we go, talking about prayer again. Here we go, another message on prayer. You know, is, is, is this truly divinely inspired? Is this something that just he threw together to put? No, 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 no. This is Holy Week. And in Holy Week, in the gospel according to Matthew, we find the first thing that Jesus does after Palm Sunday, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, is he went into the temple to bring correction. He went into the temple uh, to change the minds of those who were just about the religious routine, the current paradigm, the pattern that had been established. He goes in and he changes and he corrects and he confronts so that the people, there we go, could be inspired to make the change. I want you to make a change in your temple. Stop robbing yourself of the opportunity of prayer and stop robbing God of the opportunity to hear your voice. How I shame on the whole side? I didn't say that again, because he says you turn it into a den of thieves. Stop robbing yourself of the opportunity of prayer and stop robbing God of the opportunity to hear your voice. He wants to hear you. He wants to hear you. So we're going to pray this morning. We're going to go before the face of God. Come on. You've got to believe that prayer works got to believe that the Lord wants to hear your voice. You got to believe, you know, stop. Don't, don't rob yourself of this precious opportunity and don't rob God the opportunity to hear your voice. He delights to hear the voice of his children. 
Father, we thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. We glorify you for who you are. We honor you this morning for another day that you've created. Oh God, a day that we've never seen before, a day that we will never see again, but we thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God, into time and not into eternity. We are so amazed by your grace, your grace that is sufficient, the grace that saves and redeems us, that is not of our works, that's any one of us should boast, it is the precious gift of God. We thank you this morning for grace and we thank you for your enduring mercy. Oh God, your mercy that endures forever, your pardon for us. God, the things that we've done that we deserve death for, the things and the sins and the iniquities and transgressions that we committed, both by omission and commission. Oh God, that you could have uh, destroyed and wiped us out for it because the Bible does declare that the wages of sin is death. But we thank you, oh God, that you have yet again spared our lives. You spared our lives because you don't look at us out of the lens of our sins and our iniquities. You look at us out of the lens of the blood. And so we thank you this morning for salvation. Hallelujah. We thank you for the gift of salvation, full and free. We thank you that we are saved by your power divine. Thank you, O God, for the sacrifice that you made for us over 2,000 years ago, that you willfully laid down your life for us and you called us friend. And that through salvation, we are justified by faith. And because of that faith, we have access, yes, Lord, to you. You've opened the door, you've opened the portals, and you've invited us. You've invited us to come because we are the temple, because we're connected to you. You've invited us to exist in this symbiotic relationship with you where we can call you Abba Father. And so this morning, we call you our daddy, we call you our father, we call you our parent, we call you uh, the God who protects and preserves our lives. God, we thank you that you are our personal savior. And so Lord, we thank you that there is no one who comes to you in accordance with the scripture that you would cast away. Thank you, Father, that we cannot be plucked out of your hand. Thank you that we have been brands that have been plucked from the fire. And so we glorify you this morning. Thank you, oh God, for the opportunity to come before you to lay our burdens at your feet. Thank you that you've invited us to come to the throne of grace. You've invited us to come boldly. You've invited us to come humbly. And so we come in both ways. We come humbly because we recognize, oh God, that you are God. You are the great, holy, and mighty God. But we also come with great boldness. Yes, Lord, we come with boldness because you've invited us to come. We thank you that we don't come as beggars, we don't come pleading. We come in the full confidence of the children of God, knowing, Father, that if we have faith, even as of a size of a mustard seed, we can speak to mountains and mountains be moved into the midst of the sea. We thank you that you've given us that type of power to speak those things that be not as though they are. And so this morning in Holy Week, in this precious time, as we move throughout the commemoration and celebration of this time, in the kingdom. We thank you for the authority that you've given us as the children of God and that you breathed out upon your disciples, upon your resurrection and said, receive you the Holy Spirit. And so with that same spirit, Father, we utter our prayers this morning and we place our requests before you. Oh God, because you are the God who hears, you attend to the cry of the righteous and you hear our prayer. And so our prayer this morning is as even of the hymn of the church. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Ah, Yasha. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline your ear unto us and grant us your peace. You said for us not to fret. You told us not to worry. Hallelujah. But you told us in everything through prayer and in everything through supplication, we're to make our requests known unto you. And we thank you that the first thing you promised us, dear God, is peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. And so, Father, guard our hearts this morning with peace. Guard the hearts of those who are grieving with peace. Guard the hearts of those who are worried about finances with peace. Guard the hearts of those who are sick and caring for sick loved ones with peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, that keeps our hearts and that guards our minds through Christ Jesus. Oh God, forgive us for not being as committed as we should to prayer. God, you said men and women ought always to pray and never to faint. 
And so I thank you, Father, that we're not fading, we're not giving up, we're not throwing in the towel in the day of adversity, but we're pressing toward the mark, hallelujah, of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. So strengthen us, Lord, this morning. Strengthen us in our inner man. Oh God, in this time of reflection, help us to be more connected to sacrifice. Help us, oh God, to deepen our commitment to humility and to humanity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God, we come to you this morning asking for your help. You said you would send help from Zion. Hallelujah, so help us this morning. Help us in all of our weak places. Hallelujah, you said that when we don't know what to pray as we ought, you said the spirit of God makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And so in the in the name of the Lord Jesus, to those secret places, to those places that we've not talked about publicly, oh God, we place them at the altar. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we place them before you. We place them at your feet. Hallelujah. Because we know you can be trusted. You can be trusted with our infirmities. You can be trusted with our weaknesses. You can be trusted with our difficulties and our challenges. You can be trusted, oh God, for us to tell you our trials and tribulations. Yes, Lord, so help us. Send help, Father. Send help for that person who's on the brink of giving up and throwing in the towel. Send help this morning. Our eyes look to the hills from whence cometh our help, and our help comes from you. Send help this morning. Send help from Zion. We need your help this morning, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, so that we can walk and live a righteous and holy life. Father, we're nowhere, in no wise perfect, but we thank you that you've called us to be examples. So help us. Help, send help, Father. Help us to be the example of the believers in word and in conversation and in purity. Send help today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, send help. Help us, God, to be more forgiving. Help us to be more loving. Help us send help, oh God, to the bitter heart, to the heart and heart this morning. Send help in the name of the Lord Jesus and send deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, creating us, oh God, this morning, a clean heart and renewing us, Jesus, a right spirit. Cast not us away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we ask for your help today. Help us to be an example. Help us to walk uprightly. Help us to trust you and never doubt. Help us, oh God, to live and walk in faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we honor you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We honor you today. We honor you as God. And beside you, there is none other. Lord, whatever I may have failed to ask for, I know that you are God who can grant it in accordance with your will. I thank you that your kingdom comes now and your will is done in our lives as it is in heaven. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. And God, as we have offered prayers this morning, yes, Lord, we lift our hands to you and we simply say, yes, we surrender ourselves to you and we are more committed. Yes, Lord, we are more dedicated to the work of prayer, to the privilege of prayer, to the responsibility of prayer and to the accountability of prayer. So strengthen us, God. Prop us up on every leaning side. We honor you. We worship you this morning. We count done by faith in your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ooh, saints, I feel the prayer will done by Shabbat I feel the prayer will turn in this morning. Hallelujah. And I believe you feel it there wherever you are. I want you to never reject that whenever you sense that. Yes, Lord, as you sense his presence dealing with you and resting on you strongly, lean into that. Uh, don't, 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 don't try to shy that away. Don't try to shy away from that. Don't try to shun that. Lean into that. Hallelujah. Oh God, we honor you this morning. Praise be to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Come on and praise him all over the cyber sanctuary this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Baba Shetanidi, Amandadidi, Oshababa. Hallelujah to your name, O oh God. We honor you today, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. I want to thank God for each and every one of you that's gathered here. If this was your first time with us, please let us know this morning so we can thank God for you 
If you've not connected with us, I invite you as you let us know it's your first time to connect with us uh, via text 386-222-1070. Amen. 1070-386-222-1070. This morning, blessed be our Lord. Hallelujah. I feel God's presence so strong. Hallelujah. Bless our God. Yes. So text connect. Those of you who have not yet connected to our, our texting list, please, we'd love to be in contact with you. We've got so much coming on and coming up in this time. And we want you uh, to be a part of it. We want you to be connected with us. 386-222-1070. Listen, I believe that this is a perfect time in the week of Holy Week to make sure that we seed and that we sow. And so this morning, I want to invite those in this Holy Week time. I want to invite us this week uh, to set aside a, a seed of generations, a $40 seed for the week, nothing hot and heavy, a $40 seed for this week. We're going to ask uh, for that seed throughout our times of gathering Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All right. Text uh, your gift in this morning. You can text giving to 386-222-1070, PayPal, info at truedestinyonline.com. We have several people right now who are watching, and I want to invite us all to sow a sacrificial seed, a generational seed this week of $40. Amen. I believe that the Lord is bringing and yielding blessings on generations. And so we're sowing uh, into that. We're sowing to that impact and to that effect. So the opportunities are there on the screen. And I'm asking that we would have at least 40 people to join us this week in that gift of $40 to sow. Those of you who are covenant members, that's above and over your tithe and your offering. For those of you that are family members from all over the world, we just ask that you would join us in this time of giving. If you can't, that's perfectly fine. But we always place before God's people the opportunity to sow. All right. I love each and every one of you. There's nothing you can do about it. I want you to have an amazing day on purpose. I want you to live in and walk out your true destiny. I want you to yield yourself uh, to the prayer wheel that is turning within your soul and spirit even now. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for Bible study. In Jesus' name, God bless, God bless, God bless. Hallelujah.